This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn, and today I'm super excited to chat with my sister badass, Lori Sophia Rose. (laughs) I love that. That's probably the the best introduction ever. (laughs) There will never be a better introduction than that. (laughs) Right. Uh, Lori is a lifelong intuitive and empath. Her passions and life purpose are to help others know themselves at the soul level, the core of who they really are, and to help them transform and heal wounds physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally so that they can have a fulfilling soul-led life. That's awesome. And there are so many tools and modalities that you utilize that allow Mm -hmm. you to help people with that. Um, And one of them is the Akashic Records. So I love that. Before we get started, I pull a card before every recording, and okay. I got a beautiful card for you. It oh, is, that's gorgeous. Isn't it? It's the friendship card, and it says, trust the bonds you have created with others, knowing that the greatest gift you can give is your friendship. It is in the giving that we receive most. Mm. So... Uh, I, for one, am super happy to get to know you. I met you a couple of months ago, but I'm excited to get to know you and cultivate a friendship with you. But how does that land for you? That's perfect. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm excited to meet you because I know when I met you back at the the holistic show, the mom show, um, you and I had this media connection, you know, and, uh, you know, like you said earlier, there's a sass factor that we both have. So, yeah, so I'm excited to talk to you. So I would love to learn about your journey to exploring your intuitive and empathic gifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, as, as a young kid, um, I saw spirit, I saw angels and, um, you know, dead people, ghosts. Um, A lot of that, like many people, kind of got wiped away, but I was aware, um, I was aware that it had happened. And when I was 11 years old, I had a very traumatic experience when I, um, you know, saw somebody in my room that I was sharing with my younger sister. And I was really protective of that. And uh, after that, uh, you know, I think everything stopped. But um, I've always been intuitive. I've always had this sixth sense that I call that I used to say was useless, because I would know when people were pregnant, I would know when things were going to happen sometimes. And, you know, it just I didn't see how it really served me any good, except for entertaining a few friends when I would tell them. Yeah. Um, and um, so when I was 15, I had a really big spiritual just a experience. It wasn't one big experience, but it was a lot of in-depth exploring and really going within. And um, it wasn't until maybe 2003. Um, I remember very clearly, I was like folding laundry or something. And I was in this place where I just thought there was better in life. And I think I just lost my job And I was really happy about it because I just was in this in-between stage. And I just heard this very loud voice that said, take Reiki. And I thought, that's a very good idea. And the very next thought that came to me was like, what's Reiki and who's talking to me? (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm having these dual conversations about agreeing with the voice and then going, wait a minute. What's this voice? And so I, d- I did end up taking Reiki. It wasn't 
at that time, I think it was uh, in 2006. And that really kicked in for me. It was at a time that I was with a few colleagues that we were all talking about spirituality and, uh, you know, all that stuff, the very basics um, that we now know. And so once I took Reiki, it really kick-started some things. And it was a, a few years later that I uh, started taking um, spiritual development, uh, psychic work, uh, mediumship. And I was in a circle of friends that um, was really supportive um, and along the way, I heard of the Akashic Records, and I had heard the word a number of times, but it wasn't at the time where we had smartphones. So I would hear it, and it would be like angels singing, you know, in my voice, my head. And I'd want to go home and look it up on the internet, and I would never remember. So uh, finally, I heard it, and once, uh, and I ended up taking a class. A woman was in from. Chicago teaching in New Jersey uh, the very next week. So I took the class, um, signed up immediately for her teacher training program. So so I became uh, an Akashic Records consultant as well as uh, a teacher of the Akashic Records. And so that really, really kicked into gear um, what I'd be doing for a long time. So that was 2011. And so since then, it's just expanded. Um, and even before that, I was uh, I became a hypnotist and did some spiritual hypnosis as well as clinical hypnosis. I did some uh, healing work when my mother was dying. I got exposed to somebody that came from hospice to treat her. And the woman was doing hypnosis and put my mother out of incredible pain in like, oh wow, you know, Yes. And so I said to her, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm doing hypnosis. I'm doing healing touch. I'm doing IET. So I went and got certified in all of that. So I, I did some more healing work, hypnosis and uh, the Akashic records. And then it's just expanded from there. So, so. I, I have a question about your experience with the records. Mm -hmm. When you, when you like got into the energy of it, did it feel like you had already been accessing the collective conscious before that? Or was that really your first intentional access? Was that the, the first time? Um, it, it was kind of both. I felt like, yes, I had been connected to the collective consciousness before that. But being um, in the records and accessing it the way that I did... Now, this was back in 2011, where the energies were much, um, much denser. Yes. Um, so it wasn't easy to connect with spirit as it is right now. And so when I said the prayer and I entered, it was like, it was just pure love. It felt like I was home. Um, and I remember in the class, there were... 17 of us or so sitting around a table in a hotel room, a uh, conference room. And I remember just being in this bubble and sharing what I was experiencing. And I remember there was chatter as I was talking around the table and I, it just like nothing mattered to me. It was just, I was in this, this bubble that was my own and it was home and it was heaven and it was love and it was pure. And it was, yeah, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've, I've had. Awesome. That sounds yeah. magical. Um, when I first learned about the Akashic records, it was at an event, there was a, a, a local woman who led mm -hmm. mediumship development circles and she mm -hmm. had some friends from Lilydale. So yeah. one, one of the ladies from Lilydale came and starts talking about the Akashic Records. And I can remember sitting there thinking, no shit, that has a name? Yeah. That's what's been happening to me yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So then I, I endeavored on, on intentional study of the records. But yeah, it's it's funny how they find you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, 
you know, we have, we have free will choice, of course. And um, I, I don't know about you, but I've been brought to or led or guided to uh, modalities and I take them and I can see where there's a match with, with my energy, but it's not what I want to do. Sure. You know, the, the, the human me doesn't want that to do that process or it doesn't align with what I like to do or how I go about doing things. So, you know, so there's these uh, energies that we're just so drawn to. It's just so natural. Yeah. We've done it before. And then there's all these energies that we get to say, yeah, no, this isn't me. I don't want to do this. Totally. I do find that no matter what I find myself learning or studying, there's always some piece of information that is super yeah. useful to me. And in all reality, my humanity finds it kind of annoying that I devote an entire weekend to something and walk away with one little piece, but that's yeah. what I needed. <laughs> I agree with you. I set that intention a long time ago because uh, I used to take a lot of hypnosis classes on, on weekends and, and other healing and uh, spirituality classes. And that was my intention to walk away with one or two things that I can utilize. And so that was always my goal. Um, and when you set that goal, you're not disappointed if you don't walk away with a whole bunch of stuff, you know? Right. And, 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 you know, a lot of us are, you know, we're creative beings. So a lot of us, when we're on our, uh, you know, conscious, spiritual ascension path, we're very creative. We're very um, inventive. And so we like to take things, bits and pieces of things and sort of throw it into the pot and mix it up. You know, the way I teach the Akashic Records is not the way that I do it any longer. It's become something much different because I've changed since 2011. That's how right. it's supposed to be. Absolutely. That's how it's meant to be. I, I totally so. agree. And my my experience is the same. The way I, I access and teach the records now has evolved significantly. Mm -hmm. And it's it's great to see that. It's I don't know about you, but when you see people who have taken your class go off and and do this work and I mean, we know they're going to do it in their way. They have the process that we taught them, but things are going to change over time. And that I really, really love because I find that um, people are very gifted uh, just in the realm of the Akashic Records. But this applies to anything that, you know, that I teach or take classes with other people. I find that people have a, a special gift within that, you know, that scope. For instance, in the Akashic Records, um, I had a, a young guy who took a cl class many years ago, and he was really, really good at accessing past lives. Just by meeting with people, he would just mm -hmm. get a flash of past lives and get really in-depth stories. And uh, there's been other people that just see soul connections right away. Um, so it's interesting to see how people, how people's gifts just blossom. Right. You know? and, and I always, I always encourage people in my classes or just that I meet in general, not to compare their yeah. gifts to someone else's because from my perspective I can see the beauty of all of them but sometimes mm -hmm. people get so caught up in the well he he sees this and I don't get to see that mm -hmm. but you have yeah. some other strength that that's where you need to to really focus your attention for sure yeah um I know people who have got, uh, taken the the records and the records that I teach it's mostly focused on um, like ascended masters, archangels, and other beings of the light, not necessarily loved ones, although if loved ones come through, they come through immediately with a message and then they kind of get out of the way. But that also reflects who I am and the work that I do. It's mostly with archangels and ascended masters and other light beings and, and less so about people who have passed. 
but I know people have taken the class and have just like just woken up to their connection with loved ones and have become very gifted mediums um, or very gifted at dealing with, with angels. There was a woman um, I used to work with who, who took my class and after she took the class, I would see her in the office and she'd go, come here, got to tell you something. We'd <laughs> go into, uh, you know, an office or a conference room and she'd have a message from an angel for me. And, uh, you know, it just that those were her gifts. They just opened naturally, you know, and they were meant to at that time. Right. And I love that she w had you to share that with because. Yeah. So many people don't have a trusted friend or mentor mm -hmm. to share right. the journey with. And that makes the journey so much more rich and, and invaluable, really. Yeah. Um, but I love to see people opening up and, and exploring this without feeling like they have to hide that part of themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I love the records and could totally talk about them all day long, but you do some really cool other stuff too. So I want to know about some of the hypnosis work you do. So the hypnosis work, I, I do both clinical work. I, I worked in a medical facility for a while. And so it was an integrative medical facility. So doctors would prescribe medication, but there were other resources within the, the medical center, um, you know, like massage and acupuncture and uh, hypnosis. So doctors would refer people to me when people were maxing out on their medication, not responding to it, or they felt that there was more of a, you know, emotional or psychological uh, need that needed to be addressed. And so I would just get people showing up with anything and everything. IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, I worked with quite a bit. Um, that has great success with hypnosis uh, because there is a, uh, yeah, great, great success. And, and you know, and other related, uh, like colitis, um, I worked with a number of people for that. Uh, people had trouble with sleep, smoking, a lot of stress. Hypnosis is really, really great with working with people with stress. And in that place, I saw a lot of, uh, there were, there's three or four people I remember really clearly. They were um, they were executives and, and they were men who had very little time um, running their own business. And, and in one case, this man was running like four or five of his own businesses. And mm -hmm. I told him in the beginning, I'm going to teach him how to manage his stress. And um, he said, Lori, I don't have time for this. Like he just wanted me to do some <laughs> magic, get rid of it, and, you know, and that's just right. not the way it works. Get, so get out your wand, cast your spell, right. I got to go. <laughs> yeah. So it's a partnership. And that's what I tell him. I could work with the subconscious mind where all of these sort of programs that we're unaware of are stored. It's almost like we're a computer system and we just have to change the software. And so I showed him things that he could do um, on a conference call, on a Zoom call with his staff, um, the moments before he got out of the car. And uh, he would come back each week and he probably came for three or four sessions. And he was just changed because he was able to do these things with his eyes opened or a few minutes if he had time. Even in the men's room, I tell people to do some of this stuff when they go to the uh, the restroom. Um, and then I've ha I had some people who were on medication who would get off within, you know, one, two, three sessions. Wow. Um, and I have nothing to do with the medication. I don't get involved with what they're on or not on that. That's certainly not my call. I'm not a doctor. But a lot of times people do come to me because they want to be off medication. Mm. And so they go to their doctor or their psychiatrist to minimize their antidepressants or anti, um, 
uh, stress medications or what have you. Um, so, um, but I also do spiritual hypnosis and um, I connect people with their subconscious mind or their, their higher self for guidance directly. Um, I connect people with doing past life regressions, for instance. So we can do those in the records. The difference in doing a past life a regression and hypnosis is they're having the actual experience as opposed to, you know, uh, the Akasha record reader telling them, you know, what the past life event is. Yeah. Um, so people get a lot, particularly out of connecting them with their, their higher selves, their divine I am, because they get great, great guidance from uh, directly from their divine I am. And it's a connection and it creates that bridge between their human self and their divine I am or their higher self. Um, and I've also co connected people to uh, loved ones in hypnosis. And that's really beautiful because, again, they have the direct experience. And I guide them to set up, you know, a protocol if they want for when um, and how often they meet with the loved one if they need to. But we sort of put boundaries on it that they're not living in the past as if this person is alive, you know, walking the earth. We do it in a way that they can move forward with their life, but have this sort of bridge to their loved one for a few minutes, a week or a month. And what I find is people get such, um, such peace from the session they often don't connect with their loved one after that. They don't feel oh. like they need to because they get the, the closure that they need. Yeah. So um, that's really, both of those in particular are very moving to experience. It um, sounds it. I mean, just you talking about it is evocative. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so much to explore and there's so much to learn about that. But even the higher self, when we connect with it, Sometimes I'll have the person talk to them, uh, talk to their divine I am directly. Sometimes I'm just guided to talk to the higher self directly through me. And the person can hear what's going on from, you know, a dissociative state. And uh, we'll, we'll explore things like uh, what their physical body needs, what needs to be healed, uh, what have they not been? Um, what have they not been addressing? What's the issue in their life that's most uh, prevalent that needs to be addressed? And how would you recommend they go about doing that? And we ask the higher self to actually um, bring forward any of the healing that it can bring forward to, um, you know, help them move through whatever they're moving through on a spiritual, mental, emotional, or physical level. So, um, and that's very, very cool. I had uh, somebody recently when I, I spoke with their higher self, I asked, um, I asked for the part of themselves that was responsible for keeping this person in a, um, a state of panic and stress while driving the car. And I asked what that part wanted to be called. And the part was like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, I had another client who liked to be called butterfly. And, and she goes, oh, I love that so much. So she took on the name butterfly. And then there was another part that we had to uh, work with that was holding the energy you know, of an old program. Um, and, and I forget it was, but I, I think it kept her uh, in fear of moving forward or, or something like that. So when I asked the part, we, we talked about changing the focus of that part to do something better to help the person uh, move forward in life. Um, you know, I asked the person what they wanted to be, uh, what that part wanted to be called. And she goes, I want to be called sunshine and uh, you know, and it was, it was very, very cool, but 
the person can then work with those parts if they wanted to on a conscious level. But those parts were working subconsciously below the conscious level to help the person change those programs, whether it's stress or some kind of fear or not being successful at work or in sports or in school, um, you know, because the ego is all about keeping us small and keeping us safe. Right. And so um, it will keep us from being successful in a way that we want to be successful now. And we just have to change that, uh, that state of mind um, and reprogram it to do something different. That's really amazing work. Like the work you're doing with the world is so effective and dynamic, really. Like you're changing lives. I love that. Um, so if you have one piece of information or wisdom that you want to share with our listeners, what would that be since you're seeing all this really cool shit all the time? I think it's to know that to know that we are more empowered than ever before to change our lives, to make it what we want to be. There is always divine will and we need to assimilate with that that concept, but to also know that the d- divine is within us. We have, you know, that's my work is to connect people to their empowered divine state, to understand that they are a part of that energy we call God, the universe, the divine, whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, it doesn't matter that we have that magic within to change our lives. We are never victims. We are always, we always have the right to choose what it is that we want and how we can make our lives better, make better choices for ourselves. But it's, it's learning sometimes through, through the support of other people that, um, you know, how we go about changing our uh, mental state of, of mind, really, and making those changes on a conscious basis every day to choose better. But all experiences help uh, in the human uh, life, help us in our spiritual development and, and ascension. And that's a beautiful thing to know, I think. Yeah, it, it- the uncomfortable ones help probably a little more than the really comfortable and and nice ones. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, that's true, right? The the experiences and the people that cause us most pain are actually um, some of our greatest teachers. And when we start seeing those people and those experiences as teaching events, we can start taking our power back and looking at it from the place of what can I learn from this and and what do I want to change? I love that. Um, So I want to know, you said you're working with ascended masters and archangels Mm -hmm. and those energies. Do you have a, a, a favorite one or one you're working with more prevalently right now? Oh, I, yeah, I have some favorites, but you know, um, so my my gatekeeper is Saint Germain. He is a mm-hmm. keeper of the violet flame of transmutation and transformation. But I, you know, I have a big love with Mother Mary, Archangel Metatron. Um, be still my heart, <laughs> um, Mary Magdalene, Yeshua. Um, uh, Isis, goddess Isis, um, a lot of the divine feminine beings, um, you know, hold a special place in my heart. Um, Ascendant Master Hilarion of the Fifth Ray of Healing, mm-hmm. also another uh, personal favorite. So, uh, so there's many, fa- there's many 
that I really, really love, but those are probably my most prevalent ones. Well, I mean, like, those are all pretty heavy hitters. So I'd say they're all super awesome. They're they're amazing. They really are. And uh, Archangel Michael, I forgot about him. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, shout out to Archangel Michael. Right. Uh, every, everybody loves him. I mean, face it, I don't know anybody who doesn't love him or doesn't know about him. Right. So your work and your energy and everything about you is just, it's soothing, but it is a little sassy and spicy and I just love it. Oh, so for, sassy and spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so for all of our listeners who want to learn more about you and your work, where can they find you? Um, my website is being changed. It used to be under soul Springs, but um, I really got guided to create a new a new name as I move forward and it's called the heart of Sophia and mm-hmm. Sophia spelled S O P H I A. And, um, and that website is being developed. Uh, it should be done pretty soon. Uh, but Sophia, another favorite of mine um, is the goddess of wisdom, uh, a div- the divine mother and uh, she was the one who guided me to take on the, the name that I've taken on. Uh, Laurie Sophia Rose is not the, um, uh, you know, my legal name. It's the name that I, w- I took on about two years ago. And I just heard it and I thought, that's my real name. I've never felt connected to my legal names and never, ever, ever. So when I heard it, it was just you know, there was music playing. So yeah, so it would be uh, the heart of Sophia. My email right now is your soul springs at gmail.com. And it's Y O U R S O U L springs with an S at gmail.com. And we will include links to your new site because when we Mm -hmm. air that should be up and running so people can get in touch with you there. That's awesome. Yeah, my sessions I can do um, in person in New Jersey as well as um, over, you know, Zoom. Um, Some of my classes are also over Zoom. Some of them have to be in person. Like I have a dragon class coming up. It's very experiential. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, gosh, Jamie, I have to show you my dragons. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, that's experiential. So that's hands-on. Uh, experiences with the dragons. I probably will do an online one sometime, but right now I work with these crystal dragon uh, collection that I have and um, that's in person and people get to know them by holding these crystal dragons. So I, I think I did see some of them at the event that I, that we met. That's at. right. I brought them. Yeah. Now yeah. there's about, there's about 20 of them now. Awesome. So Well, I encourage our listeners to learn more about Lori Sophia Rose. And I want to thank you for joining me. And we'll see you next week on Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 